Hey, hello everybody, Stuart here from Stupid Gaming, doing another video on the comparison between Citadel Forge with Fire and Ark. So, uh, for this particular um, video, we are going to be looking at the creatures in the world as well as the graphics of the two games. So, uh, let's get into it, let's see what both games have to offer, and um, I hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy, please remember to click that like button and leave me a comment down below of what you think of this series in general. Okay, so on to the wildlife. Um, quite simply, the wildlife in Citadel Forged with Fire is probably the least diverse of any of this type of game. Um, I say this type of game, I'm comparing Ark and Citadel um, only. Um, if we were to look at something like Conan as well, Conan Exiles, then that would probably have a lower um, a lower diversity, but I haven't played that much. But between Ark and Citadel Forged with Fire, Citadel definitely has the lower um, diversity of creatures. So what I have seen myself so far are Death Weavers, which are kind of like a spiritual... They're very much like the... Um, the ghostly apparitions from Harry Potter. Um, we have hares, we have boar, we have elk, we have direwolves, we have bears, giant eagles, birds, dragons, both flame dragons and infernal dragons, and demons. We do have some golems, which uh, I've seen once before, and they're kind of like very large rock spiders. Um, but other than that, there's not really that much else that I have seen. Um, I suppose we've got sprites, undead, and skeletons as well. But now I'm struggling to think of anything else. Um, there's no aquatic life whatsoever. Um, there's only giant eagles, um, two types of dragon, and birds in the sky. So there's nothing else in the sky. And there's nothing really else other than those particular um groups so realistically from a, a wildlife perspective it's quite an empty-ish world um you don't get huge clumps of uh, animals or creatures around they do seem to be quite sparse but in reality that's probably more like real situations so if you go into a forest or a wood for instance you're not likely to see 20 or 30 um deer in, in an area, um, you're more likely to see one or two in a, a confined space and then not see any more for quite a long time. So um, I think that's probably more accurate to real, real life. As far as what are the things you can, you're can you likely to see, um, there is nothing else really, nothing else at all. You don't see any other types of creatures so there's no insects or or anything like that so overall wildlife is quite sparse as i say but it does seem to make sense with the world that we're in demons dragons um i think there are phoenix as well and giant eagles that sort of thing they all seem to fit in with the type of game that this really is so uh, it does make sense harry potter um we have hares, we have boar, we have elk, we have direwolves, we have bears, giant eagles, birds, dragons, both flame dragons and infernal dragons, and demons. We do have some golems, which uh, I've seen once before, and they're kind of like very large rock spiders. Um, but other than that, there's not really that much else that I've seen. Um, I suppose we've got sprites, undead, and skeletons as well. But now I'm struggling to think of anything else. Um, there's no aquatic life whatsoever. Um, there's only giant eagles, um, two types of dragon, and birds in the sky. So there's nothing else in the sky. And there's nothing really else other than those particular um groups so realistically from a, a wildlife perspective it's quite an empty-ish world um you don't get huge clumps of uh, 
animals or creatures around they do seem to be quite sparse but in reality that's probably more like real situations so if you go into a forest or a wood for instance you're not likely to see 20 or 30 um deer in in an area um you're more likely to see one or two in a, a confined space and then not see any more for quite a long time so um i think that's probably more accurate to real real life as far as what are the things you can you're likely to see um there is nothing else really nothing else at all you don't see any other types of creatures so there's no insects or or anything like that so overall wildlife is quite sparse as i say but it does seem to make sense with the world that we're in demons dragons um i think there are phoenix as well and giant eagles that sort of thing they all seem to fit in with the type of game that this really is so uh, it does make sense okay so the creatures on arc are well how should i put it prehistoric um prehistoric in nature and prehistoric in temperament now i don't just mean prehistoric as in from dinosaurs i mean prehistoric as in we also have dodos now extinct we have other creatures um, that they've added recently so some maps include wyverns a type of dragon some maps include um, phoenix some maps include griffins um, some maps include golems it's so like a uh, an actual stone golem um, some maps include horses um, what you won't find is you won't find rabbits you won't find bear well you will find dire bears you will find dire wolves but you won't find standard bears or wolves. You won't find elk, um, although you will find the prehistoric equivalent. Um, so, yeah, the actual wildlife in this game is much more diverse than you will find in Citadel. In fact, I have mentioned on a number of occasions that I am surprised there's no aquatic life in Citadel Forge of Fire. And as you can see here, we have an abundance of it so we have fish everywhere we have um jellyfish which are horrific by the way we've got a megalodon which you can see in the distance which is a giant shark and if we were going to the very depths of the sea we would find plesiosaur we would find um a multitude of very very dangerous very aggressive and very strong enemies um we also have the uh, prim uh, primitive and um, original version of dolphins. Um, I can't remember what they're called. Ichthyosaurus, I think. But yeah, we have giant turtles, stingrays, etc. And all of those add to a what I would consider to be quite a diverse and um, realistic feeling ocean. Now, you know, you, you can... The fish are quite good. Now, you can do fishing. Um, so, you can capture these fish as well. It, it does mean that there's a, a lot of variety to the world and the environment. Now, there are obviously the uh, staple dinosaurs such as T-Rex, um, raptors. There's even a titanosaur, which is ridiculously big. Um, and that is actually used for PvP raiding, of all things. So you can use that as your um, tank to basically smash doors down and take a lot of damage. Other than that, you do have sort of birds. The um, most recent additions are some quite horrible birds. Um, you've got Pteranodons, you've got uh, Argentavis... Um, which are giant vultures. There's lots and lots of different creature variety in this game. Um, but there's no magical creatures. And by magical, I mean you're not going to find sprites or imps. Um, you're not going to find demons. All of these are fantastical, yes. But not magical. Um, I suppose the most magical you could possibly think of would be the dragon. But even that is not really magical in and of itself.
So moving on to the graphics. Now this includes both information on the biomes and the night sky. Well, as you can see from what's on screen at the moment, the night sky in um, Citadel Forge with Fire is beautiful, but not really very much like the night. Um, it's very blue in colour, um, very bright, and gives the impression that it's trying to be more mystical than it is accurate. And to be honest, it works. Um, I think the type of game that this is, yes, it is, of course, a survival-ish type game, but I think this is supposed to be more RPG than survival. And because of that, the the graphics of the night sky are probably quite accurate to what they're trying to portray. Now, with regard to the other graphics, the water itself, as you can see, is quite nice. Um, it doesn't seem to be overly reflective. Uh, you can see, obviously, the, the sun or the moon reflecting in the water. But other than that, it's... Um, I mean, we can actually for somehow swim fly, um, which is very odd. Um, but there we go. But yeah, it's 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 nice looking water effects. Um, if we go close to them when we're not on the bird, um, you can kind of see underwater when you get close. But when you do go underwater, it's again very very blue. Um, and it's almost like the particles from the atmosphere are also under the water. The grass and the foliage has got nice reflective properties. Um, it does look quite nice and natural. Um, the textures on some of the wood are a little bit lacklustre, but other than that, they're they're pretty good. And the god rays coming through the trees are absolutely stunning. Now, realistically, I haven't been to the other biomes much. I've been to the, the snow biome once, but there's not really that much to see. Um, it's pretty, and that's about all you will get. Uh, but there are different areas you can go which have different um, aesthetics to them. In effect, uh, they also have different items to collect, uh, and actually, you do start seeing some of the other creatures, such as the Death Weavers, etc., as well, um, which do give it a, a different gameplay feel. But realistically, graphically, they are very, very similar between the biomes. There's just a different color palette. In effect, the um, textures are similar. The trees etc are all very similar as I say it just looks like there's a covering of snow over all of it so graphically um, I think it's safe to say Ark is a very good looking game the water effects are without doubt um, amazing um, the textures of the actual floor themselves are quite well defined the rocks, the creatures, um, all of it is is nice to look at. Now the sky is, I suppose, one of the developer's favourite features. So it really does look like a real sky. And it is, by name, True Sky. So they actually implemented something developed by a third party called True Sky, which means they have this lovely realistic cloud formations um the sun reflects off clouds properly all sorts of really nice things go on with the actual sky now when it comes to the night time the sky is again amazing so we have realistic stars um sometimes you'll actually get like a galaxy or nebula around um it is truly amazing. Now, the problem that you have is with Ark, as you get later through the night, it almost gets impossible to see. Now, this is a very clear sky, so we can see a bit more than we normally would. But 
if you go into any sort of foliage you've had it you can't see a thing and unlike citadel where it's always nice and blue and you can see where you're going here unless you've got that starlight or you equip your torch you're not going to see a thing you're not going to see any enemies attack nothing and in a lot of cases you do get attacked by things that make no sound which makes it even worse but graphically and atmospherically it's absolutely brilliant and other than the time constraint Ark is probably still my most played game up until this point Citadel and um, Inquisitor Marta are slowly catching up but this is still my most played game according to PlayStation. Well guys that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it please click the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and make sure you do click that bell icon. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think of the video and the two games and I really do look forward to seeing you for my next video very very soon. You all take care, bye for now.